Okay, so here's, um, this is what I use for the strip guitar. If you start with a sander, what you're going to have a very difficult time um, really grinding into the outer surface, which is uh, probably epoxy, the sleek surface of the wood, and a lot of time and energy um, sanding it down with a orbital sander, just an electric sander. So I use what's called Clean Strip Premium Stripper. It indicates that you can start working within 15 minutes, but I leave it overnight. It's much better if you just leave it in. <clears throat> so for example here, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna keep the section here, and I'm gonna go around in a circle here. We're gonna do it overnight. Alright, so Kim, so this is a plastic um, scraper. How easy it comes out. You really just need just one application. You can do more if you like. But now with this out, once I go over with the electric sander, these pieces just fly right off. Save a lot of time doing this. <coughs> Of course you have to wear gloves and uh, goggles, this is uh, like acid, really powerful. That's the you want to do it. It's pretty mild. How simple that was. It goes on like as a gel. I'll show you. What you want to do is shake it. Dries away from the physical will, release, toxic gas, fumes. See that? Gel. Only pour that gel and just spread it over nice and thick. Over all the areas that you'd like to scrape off. You're gonna be standing. <clears throat> and that's it. Okay, so here's what we use. Real simple. Um, circular. Circular sand. Orbital. And um, 60 coarse grid is what I'm using here. And we'll move up to uh, 150 to 220. And maybe higher. Shot back. Any shot back uh, for all the dust. I got one of these uh, orbital sanders and just plug in here. It's all the dust. And I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Here's the front. Let's see where it goes from here. Okay, so here is the uh, completed sanding. Uh, for now, I'm going to go in with the Dremel sander and get rid of uh, all this. All the red you see there, I'm going to leave the red in there. Um, I used a 250 grit sand paper. I didn't go too high. I still want the... I, I want a lot of grain in there to uh, be able to uh, act like a sponge to the water-based or oil-based um, dye that I'll be putting in. I'm not sure enough really what I'm going to use. <clears throat> I was thinking about using Japan dryer, mixing it with some acrylic paint or oil-based paint. Because I'm looking for, uh, this one's going to be a, a woodsy scene, and that's why I gave it this, this sanding finish, as if it were a uh, chisel, hard, route. Well, that 
the sphere. <clears throat> I don't know what that is. Remember, I'm the beginning. I don't know anything about wood. And that is, uh, I need to work on that, get rid of that, whatever those things are. Um, but anyways, uh, paint's gonna be, there's a whole paint scene that you want to do that. Um, <clears throat> gave it that little design there, which I'll finish off with the um, Dremel sander. Yep, really detailed. See that? And um, I cleaned this off. After sanding, I cleaned it off with mineral spirits. I love the two-tone wood there. Got the same tone here that goes around. I think that'll really jump out when I um, use the add the paint to it. And it's gonna be like a like a water scene. Aqua scene with the red representing sunset and some orange around it as well. Black on this. Original black. I wanna keep a hint of what was on there before. Um I don't mind it This is a star caster. See the uh, chisel look. It's gonna be a very woodsy thing. Going on, I might apply a couple flat leaves here throughout the this one. The green thing going on with the black. This will be the awesome. Okay, so what I uh, what I did next was uh, just get this really cheap um, acrylic, water-based acrylic paint at Walmart for 50 cents a bottle. This is a cobalt hue. Now what I'm doing with this, since it's going to be an aqua uh, water uh, based or oil based uh, stain I'm looking to use, I want to bring out the grain, the grain in the wood. <clears throat> and as you, as you can see, this was uh, machine sanded um, previously by the manufacturer because you see those See that? Those swirls? I don't have anything that would have caused those swirls. Um, maybe the orbital stander will do that, but it doesn't swirl that quickly in one, one spot. So if anyone knows, you know, please uh, let me know. <laughs> but uh, I didn't do anything that would cause that type of. Uh, Effect in the grain, but what I'm going to try to do is um, now that I've got the you see the blue into the grain, I will attempt to eliminate those swirls by hand using a uh, 60 grit or stronger. And um, here's the that's throughout. That might have been some of the work beforehand in the factory. I wonder if I'm getting this on camera. Anyways, um, I went down with the blue to create, to bring out the, there you don't need to see it, but you know, when I sand it, hopefully that will bring out the grain. Um, and just leave the grain. So, um, <laughs> nice uh, weather outside. Seriously, I love this weather. I have to close the shades. And, um, well, anyways, uh, this basically was like this. I like to sand it down. It was too solid blue. Lost a lot of the wood grain. It was just too thick on one coat. And it just didn't didn't feel right. And maybe it didn't feel right because of all the defects the wood has. That's why companies like this, Ivan has, you know, all the guitar companies, they use the real inexpensive woods. They're going to lacquer it, paint it, and cover it anyways. Um, not this not in particular, but there's little different issues in the wood, you can tell here. And then um, the sander I use, never use an orbital sander, that's for sure. 
more of a little sanding that ca caused all this ruckus in here that you see. A little furrowed. I thought it was from the manufacturing. But as an inexperienced woodworker, I did not know an experienced worker would take one look at this and know right away. No, that's from your sander. That's from your orbital sander. You gotta stop using it. If I start sanding my hand to try to get all this out, it doesn't. <laughs> so, I sanded most of the blue off. It was pretty solid, kind of like that. And what I'm doing now is going over it the aqua with a golden pecan. Golden pecan color. So I want to accentuate the wood. I want to make the wood really stick out. The fact that it's well, it, may, it may not be nice wood, but I'm trying to also cover the effects of that. But um, rain is coming in. <laughs> I'm gonna have to stop recording, but um, just another step in the process as we move closer to something that actually may look right. Which right now it doesn't. <laughs> Here's something very interesting. You know, I use the uh, premium clean strip uh, stripper. It's always easier than uh, sanding. Sanding would be pretty bad. But here's the inexpensive Fender Starcaster, and it just flakes right off. Okay, very cheap, inexpensive guitar. And here is the Ibanez. Okay, a very expensive guitar, very good quality, and. Um, I put three, four coats of stripper on here, and look, it's like baked into the wood. So, when I hit this by accident, very difficult to chip. This will come right off. And look, you have some writing from the factory there, for the parts the warehouse. There's the Ibanez. Showing the difference in quality. A little bit more of the progression. A few things I didn't videotape in between. I was really focused on this and this look. Sanded it, just tried different things. I didn't go through the showing you the different phases of what that looked like. Here's the back. I'm working on this line. I might bring it through here or maybe just this area here and then bring a line faded this way. It's a work in progress. 
Okay, here's where we are today. back. Okay, here's where uh, uh, we're not get finished with the painting yet, but um, I'm going to install this momentary switch small one but it does the trick um, this guitar only came with three holes for the uh, volume and tone so now we're gonna have uh, two tones uh, or two volumes and one tone um, the output and a monetary switch so that's five holes that we need so when we have three I'm adding two uh, momentary switch is gonna go there first one we want it to be uh, very close to the you know the strumming playing right there and you have your volumes and your two tones here um, and your five voice switch so once it's installed I'll show you how to connect this the standard five way um, guitar setup Okay, so I finished the um, the holes, the holes in the guitar. So now we have five holes. One is for the. Bobby, I can see you, Bobby. Hold on, Bobby, hold on, Mima. What you'll see at the end, that's the kill switch, right there, and the uh, volume, two volumes and two tones, and five way switch. So now we're gonna. Finish it with uh, fast drying polyurethane clear gloss. This is going to be super high gloss. I'll try to make it as super high gloss with buffing and everything as possible. So what we're going to do first of all is let's take a look at the detail. What was that? Um, you alright son? Ah. Is that a burp or a fart? <laughs> huh? Mm -hmm. Is that a burp or a fart? It is, it is. Oh. You did that with your mouth? Huh? Okay. Um, sorry about that. Let's take a look at the back. Okay, now, um, I'm not going to show you through the process, I'll probably make a separate video uh, as well with just the polyurethane application. Uh, when you look up videos on YouTube, you want to sit there for 40 minutes to go through each and every step. This is real simple. Get your polyurethane, a very cheap, I don't know, six, seven bucks at Home Depot. First thing you want to do is clean it up uh, with mineral spirits, make sure there's no dust. And if you've painted like the, like I have here with uh, acrylics, you want to lightly because that'll take the paint right off. So just just that's a, uh, like a clean pass through with a with a rag or an old wife beater, and um, uh, clean it up. And then we'll start with one coat. We're gonna use this the sponge brush. Okay, you got like 
twenty for a buck at the dollar store. <laughs> um, we're gonna go on one coat, pretty thick. Um, then I'm gonna sand it, and then go on second, and third. I'll show you between between coats. Actually, I'll show you bef before the sanding what it looks like, and then uh, after each coat. Okay. So now here we are after five coats of polyurethane, and you'll see that it's very bumpy. Um, even though I sand it in between um, coats, it's it's very bumpy. So what I'm going to do next is go over it with a 2,000 grit um, sandpaper. I'm going to wet sand it with the orbital sander, very light, and then I'm going to polish it using uh, any kind of polish I can get my hands on. I have symbol polisher, but I don't think that'll work. But uh, you see, you see how uh, bumpy it is, uneven. Uh, it's because I used the brush and the sponge. I was trying both techniques. Um, but just just to show you here, this is what I'm gonna I'm gonna put a blue coat over the white of the pickups. I was thinking about leaving it white, but it stands out too much in my opinion. So if it doesn't look good, I'll just take off the blue that I'm putting on top. But this is the only thing I'm actually going to take down. So I'm going to keep the sides white on the pickups. Gives it a nice little accent. And I may be using, uh, I'm not sure yet if the I'll be using the white to match the pickups or maybe the gold to actually match the body. Um, I don't know. You guys tell me what you think looks better after the you know the pickups are in. You'll see the white there matching. Or what I was thinking about doing is creating uh, some round knobs. And these would be the aqua blue. It has a hole on each side, but um, I would cover um, maybe add an accent, maybe like a gem or something on there. Hmm, just a thought. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do. I think I'll try all three and see which one looks best. And here's the kill switch. It goes in there. I'm just going to keep it black so it stands out as something uh, quite different. Um, i paint a little red like a fire button there. Can't wait to use that. Uh, but that's, the, that's how we're doing so far. Let's take a look at the back. That's rough. Sand it down. Right now. Make sure I don't go to all the way through. So here we're up to the neck. And um, just like I started with the body of the guitar with the vintage aqua. Um, stain, rub it in here. I did this ZPG for Zero Point Giant. Uh, guitar brand. Um, with this wood burning tool and um, put my signature and date on the back. This is the Ibanez. Um, looks different than an Ibanez because I rounded it off here. I gave it a curve here. It's rounded on both sides. Took off one of the tips. Okay, now we're going to go with the yellow. And also rub the aqua in there, so you have you'll see the grain. I'll show a hint of the original aqua. I forgot to record that um, I also put on a coat of golden pecan on the guitar um, after the first layer of mustard yellow. Here's the final piece before it's uh, polyurethane for the finish.
get rid of that covers the wells. Um, that's the uh, marking directly on the top. And the amount of plus of that. Bless you, son. Here's the final product. <laughs> There's a lot I didn't record. Um, I didn't focus so much on recording just uh, the steps. Um, there are a lot of videos out there that show you step by step. And just watch. I just want to make a video where um, I tell you what I do and then I'll see the results. I'll show you the process. Hopefully, I mean, you can appreciate that. Um, because I'm not an expert at what I'm doing. This is the first time I do this anyway. So anything I show you would be um, irrelevant to learning. Because you want to learn the right way. In the process, I've done, I've made so many mistakes, but that's the way you learn. So, uh, anyways, here's the final product. Um, there's a kill switch, a volume, and two tones. Five-way switch, and the output. Um, I'm going to change this to a silver with white tip match the white that's on there um, but I uh, decided to go with a satin finish as the gloss which is too glossy in my opinion um, with the matching sparkle. Back. This guitar was just a damaged piece of work. There was no uh, covers for the back, so so these are plexiglass that I cut out to as close as I could to the actual openings. And now I'm going to show you the beginning to my next project. Version number 